Hello and welcome to the Medic electrical plugin. This is the first video in a series of tutorials for this uh, new uh, SketchUp extension that I've created. This is the Medic electrical extension or plugin, if you will. Um, <coughs> so what I have here is a simple toolbar so far, just one toolbar, um, and you can see that it is uh, fairly well. I think easy to understand. You've got switches. You've got outlets, you've got light fixtures, you've got low voltage outlets, or I like to call them data. Uh, you have service panels or load centers. Uh, you have the el el <coughs> edit electrical uh, feature or uh, tool, which allows you to edit. Uh, well, actually, it's uh, in progress right now, but it will allow you to edit any um, outlet or, or other fixture. Of course, you have the delete. Uh, estimating is also under development. And let's start here with the global settings. So just like the other plugins, the uh, global settings allows you to set some defaults for the behavior of the uh, plugin. Um, right here, it's very similar to the other ones. You have a construction dimensions, where you can set the color and the size and uh, arrows and that sort of thing. Um, this is uh, more kind of specific to this plugin. You can turn the electrical 2D symbols on and off. And then you have what's called a label callout for each um, item, and you can turn those separately on and off. Uh, basically, I just put the label to the switch, like switch one, switch two, switch three. And here, of course, are your prefixes that can go, and you can have these blank, so you can just have one, two, three, or you can have you know SW1, SW2, that sort of thing. So fairly self-explanatory. Um, very similar to other plugins, you have layers that are created and defined. You can turn those on and off, of course. Um, we also have materials, and the material manager is very similar um, to the other plugins. <coughs> and then, of course, each um, type of electrical fixture has a default behavior. So, switches, you can set some of the default behaviors for switches, for outlets, for low voltage and load centers and also lighting so <coughs> yeah it's fairly straightforward of course you have your license tab and the estimating tab is currently still under construction so let's start with switches um, <coughs> basically you have you know your basic switch style your decora your standard and then if you just want to put blanks in you can do that as well um, but rather than show you the global settings let's go ahead and start creating some switches so <coughs> Uh, what I've done actually is I've initially I set this up so that it would work specifically with the wall plugin, the Medic wall plugin. Um, <coughs> and then per a uh, number of user requests, um, I'm trying to set it up that it'll work uh, equally well with just any sort of generic, um, what I call wall geometry. So in this case, this is just a, s a group, it doesn't have to be a solid, but it just happens to be. Um, and we will investigate that shortly. So what I do is I go ahead and create, click this, and up pops the switch menu. And so this, basically the default settings of load here are what are active. So if you want to do exactly what this is, then you go here and you just mouse over your uh, wall and you can see that, um, you know, there's a switch kind of mocked up and you can just position it anywhere along there. Now, <coughs> obviously we want to align it next to a stud. So what we do is we hit the control key and when you do that, it bounces it one way to the other or the other. So if I want to go to this side of the stud, and I can go like that. And you notice each time you, you hit the control key, it toggles it. So it goes, uh, I think it's left, center, right, and just keeps rotating through all those. So let's go ahead and let's do left. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. And you can, you know, do that sort of thing. You, can, you, don't, have to, you don't have to be positioned at the bottom. You can be positioned anywhere. Okay. <coughs> Hit spacebar, get you out, of course. Um, so you'll notice here in the layers, you have a number of layers that are created. Um, the two real important ones are the finish and the rough. And the finish, of course, will turn off the face plates and the switches. And the rough will turn off the boxes. So I've organized it like that for now. Um, let's explore a few more options here with this switch. So for instance, um, let's say we want to do decora style. And of course, you can change the color of the switch itself, or you can change the faceplate color, and that will select from the colors that are white as a default, and that will always be there. But you can always um, 
use the material manager to define other colors that you would like to use so you'll notice that it populates these um, fields here with those colors let's go ahead and do a two gang uh, switch and as soon as you change that go ahead and hit update okay and notice we're back to uh, well actually we're on this side so we can hit control let's see here let's see which way we want this guy Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now you see we've got some Decora switches. These are based on Leviton brand uh, switches. You'll also notice too that we down here in the bottom, um, <coughs> we're creating, creating the 2D symbols because we have those turned on, and we're also putting labels on it. Um, and you'll notice that if you look closely here, you can see that this is offset by the thickness of the gypsum. So I, I have the gypsum turned on, it's just I have the layer turned off so I can see the studs. So if I turn that gypsum back on, so you can see that it's properly uh, putting it on the surface of the uh, of the, sh the sheetrock here. So I like to, when I do add switches and outlets, so I do like to turn this off and so I can see where to put the, put the switches against the studs. And so, you know, we have lots of options here. Um, Let's see, uh, let's go back, uh, and of course you can go up to a four-gang four, four gang switch. Um, you know, I guess there is some call for that sort of thing. Let's hit control, and bingo. Okay, so there you go. Um, now let's try something a little more different here. We're going to go back to a one-gang switch. Now we're going to try a weatherproof switch. Okay. <coughs> need to go one one gang on that Hit update okay and I'm gonna actually face the other side of the wall and by doing that um, it'll allow me uh, basically to position this switch on this side of the wall okay and then you can see that we are grabbing the weatherproof switch this is based on a tamac uh, enclosure and there you have a weatherproof switch. Now I didn't align that to the stud so it's probably all wrong but if you wanted to you would simply just turn off these layers so that you line it up properly. See it's out in the middle of nowhere. <coughs> but <coughs> uh, and, and right now I don't have a move function set up um, but I as far as moving these it's just a matter of jumping in into the group. Oh, sorry. Um, so I've jumped into the group for the wall and I'm just it's just a matter if you need to move it uh, you just use this the default uh, native move tool. Okay, so there we go. Of course, I probably messed up the height of that, but I shouldn't have. Um, <coughs> so now it's against the stud. Okay, um, what else about switches? For switches, uh, there's lots uh, to know, I guess, but uh, there's quite a few things you know you can explore with this thing. I have the advanced options turned on and if you turn them off it doesn't you know doesn't do much other than just turn that one feature on and off right now but default orientation of course is vertical if you want you can do horizontal mount there is certain situations where that might be useful and um, oh, we need to jump out of the uh, <coughs> Jump out of this group. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, by the way, when you're doing switches on the Medique walls, you don't want to be inside the group. You want to be outside of the group. So let's go ahead. And when I mean that, I mean just you know, don't be clicked into the into the wall panel group itself. Just be exterior to everything. Uh, where were we now? Okay. So we're going to add switches. Um, we're going to just do a single pull switch. And this time we're going to mount it horizontally. Okay. So let's just hit the control key again. Figure out where we're at. Okay. And and you can see that when you go horizontal, it the preview of course shows the switch where it's going to be horizontally. And there you go. <coughs> okay. So that's probably a pretty good. Uh, demonstration of the plugin. I'm going to get into more details with s service panels and outlets and that sort of thing on a on a different video. But I just want to show you guys at least uh, the basics. Um, I think what we need to show you next is so this is with a Medique wall panel. And so here we have just a basic uh, like I said geometry for a wall. 
and similar to and I'm going to turn this to vertical and notice how it loads up the previous uh, defaults that you just previously used for the last switch so that's kind of a typical feature I'm going to go back to standard here okay and now <coughs> as you mouse over these um, other walls uh, you can see it, what it's doing is actually it's looking for the face okay of the of in this group and what it does is it finds this uh, lower left corner b indicated by the green um, little square there open square and then it will uh, allow you to place switches in these walls and I've kinda set the transparency so you can see what's happening inside of there so you know as you just move around you can uh, drop them in just like that and you can put multiple in it you know any how, any how you like and then you know you want to change things up you want to go to a two gang there we go then you want to change this maybe to a three-way switch on one and a four-way switch on the other hit update let's jump over to this side of the wall okay and of course the switch doesn't look really any different but you'll notice down here in the 2d symbol it'll show you, you know, the three and the four it'll give you indication of what you're dealing with and there's quite a few different ones here what the weatherproof switch will draw with the weatherproof enclosure most of these other ones um, of course the dimmer switch let's, um, let's just go back to one gang the dimmer switch with a standard will show you the uh, this nice little rotary uh, dimmer switch and then if you go with the uh, decor brand on a dimmer switch it will show you this little guy <coughs> and Corina, there's lots of other variations I haven't quite got that far yet <laughs> um, yeah like so for instance if you go fan switch you know the geometry of the fan switch is going to be the same but down here you'll see a little F indicated <coughs> and that tells you that's a fan switch so, uh, so far it looks pretty robust. I mean, you know, I haven't fully tested out this, uh, probably tested this out quite enough, but um, you can see that the switches are being dropped in the right spot on the right side of the wall and rotated properly, and they are 48 inches above the uh, floor. <coughs> and by the way, the floor is defined, currently I have it defined not by the face of this wall as much as I have it defined by where the origin the Z height or the Z origin of the, um, of the group is. So that is the floor. I may change that at some point if that uh, proves not to be uh, popular, but we'll see how that goes. <coughs> and the reason people ask me, you know, why do you embed the switches into the wall? Well, that's pretty obvious, I think. Uh, you know, if you want to move the wall now, well, if you move it, there goes the switches with it, so they don't get left behind. And of course, the same holds true for. Um, you know, any of the deep walls as well. Having them embedded makes it easy to move the walls around. So right now I am still working on the uh, edit electrical uh, function. Um, I need to finish that, um, but the uh, delete, of course, go ahead and click that, and then you just mouse over each switch, and you just go ahead and, as it highlights, you just click on it, and it removes that switch same thing over here click it again and there we go we can just keep deleting them as we go no. so the, the tool is persistent it just uh, allows you to <coughs> keep deleting switches if you need to or, or outlets or, or anything else for that matter um, <coughs> so I'll just show you really quickly I haven't added in the other uh, tools yet into a st uh, what I call a generic wall, but I have added them here into the Medique wall. So after I've kind of tested this out a little further, we will um, add them in for a generic wall. But let's uh, go ahead and try an outlet. And I've got some stuff going on here. And there's an outlet. And then a light fixture. Um, I've got this set default there. Uh, let's see what have we got. Let's see here. 
and by the way with light fixtures um, you can add in your own custom light fixtures right now I only have just the default ones that I've added into the library but that is easily enough you can add in as what you ever you want or you can have none if you just want to put the boxes in okay so I've just got a simple lamp holder and of course it's on the right wrong side so this is the reason why you might want to rotate it <coughs> so let's hit undo we want to rotate that by <coughs> 180 degrees that uh, base it doesn't rotate the light fixture it does re rotate the box so now when you draw that in Oops, what did we do here? Not entirely sure. And that may be a bug. I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that one. Why it drew it like that. Hmm. Anyways, um, let's try that one more time. Update that box rotation 180 degrees. Yeah, it seems like it's drawn it in the wrong spot. I'll have to play with that. Um, anyways, uh, that's the video, and um, yeah, we'll uh, we've got some more work to do, but this is a basic introduction of the Medic Electrical Plugin. All right, thank you very much.